Okay, we're covering a PSB6A injection pump off of the M35A2 deuce and a half. Uh, I'm going to go through and replace the hydraulic head unit up here and probably put an O-ring kit on it. I guess I won't replace it, but we're just going to put the O-ring set on it. We'll go over some of the features of the pump. You've got a lubrication port, front drive. This is your fuel pump on the pump that boosts the pressure. Your transfer pump in the tank pushes fuel up to this pump, pushes it through your fuel filter system, and then enters over here on your fuel compensator. This is the fuel shutoff, and then this is your throttle linkage. So that's the basic parts of it. There's a timing notch inside this cover. I'll tip it up a little bit. I won't get a good picture of it yet, but down inside of here is a timing mark you'll need to actually time the pump. So other than that, we'll get into some of the teardown on it. Okay, on most of these injection pumps, the part that quits working on them when they stop pumping fuel. In the center here, there's a high pressure pump on the top of the injection pump quill. Down on the inside of here is a piston pump that'll move up and down. I don't know if we'll be able to see it or not when I turn this shaft, but you should be able to see that pencil move. It should move up and down. Most of them get sticky and quit moving. And it's not going to move a whole lot. Let's see if I can get it to show it at all. There, that pencil moved up. Might have to zoom in on it. Can you see down close right here where it says soft? I'll turn that and see how that moves up and down right there. That's actually what's pumping the fuel. Most of these pumps, when they quit working, that's what gets stuck on them. A lot of times if they get old fuel in them or contamination, that'll quit working. The Bosch claims this is a non-serviceable part, but for the price of them, you can get pretty creative. We'll have it apart here in a minute, and I can actually show you. I won't tear this one apart, but I can show you how to take it apart. So that should be Okay, to get the hydraulic head off, you've got to get into the fuel shutoff. To get the fuel shutoff, you remove these two screws, and the fuel shutoff will lift off of this. Here's your fuel shutoff lever. I don't know if you guys can see down in here. Let me zoom in on that. This sometimes will get stuck. That would be another reason sometimes the trucks won't operate. See how that one's kind of hanging up? That shouldn't be that sticky. So when I back these two screws off, this will become all of a sudden really loose, usually. When you put the new O-ring set in, normally there's tie wire across here. We'll be putting a new tire wire back, tie wire back on it. It's just off there right now so you guys can see how this is going to be. But if you loosen these screws up just a little bit, this will get really easy to move, usually. Oh, this one's a little gummed up. Eh, it's not going to cooperate. Anyways, these two screws are going to come out. Okay, there's a metal retainer clip here. I don't know if you can see the spring-loaded retainer clip right here. When you're taking this off, make sure you don't drop it down in the pump case. You're going to have a lot of fun getting it back out. I usually like to rotate it around, get where I can push on it, and I'll still hold the thing so I don't lose it. And hope and pray I don't drop it in there. Sometimes these can be kind of a little tricky to get out. They do have a pry notch. I'll try that maybe. There it is. Okay, that's a little retainer. I don't know if you can see that. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you lose that in there, you're going to be an unhappy camper. Okay, you push this shaft down and you lift up on this. There's actually a cam that rides on this. This has to come out before you take the hydraulic head off. A lot of guys will take the screws out of here, pry on this, and they break this. If you get this loose. And lining this back up can be a lot of fun. It usually sits about the 6, 30, 7 o'clock position when you put it back in, if it's in right. If you flip it around, there's a little cam you can see on this back side, and that's what moves your fuel shut off down inside of here. I don't know if we'll be able to see it. I'll see if I can get some video of it here in just a second and get some light down in there. Okay, before you remove the hydraulic head, underneath here, there's actually a timing notch for the hydraulic head, and it does not correspond with the timing notch in the window. A lot of people wonder that. They're close, but they don't line exactly up. If you can see that one tooth there, it's got a little bit of a notch on it. It's pointed on an arrow. That has to be lined up before you take the hydraulic head out. Now, I've taken the retaining bolts for the hydraulic head off. You got these retaining clips here, loosen them up. Once that's lined up, this whole hydraulic head's gonna slip up and out of here. So we'll see if we can get a little different angle at it and we'll show video of it coming out. Okay, I can take that hydraulic head. Now that timing mark down there's lined up. Take and wiggle this and it'll come up and out. These two clips will come off. Retainers. And there's the hydraulic head right there. 
Okay, to know that you got it at the right position, while you got the hydraulic head out, if you look at this gear, you can see there's a tooth that's notched. That should be pointing into the housing. There's also a button that rides down right in the very bottom of there. It's on the bottom of the hydraulic head. Sometimes that'll fall off. Let's see if I can get a picture of it here. Okay, this button right here that comes off of here. That little button. You can see how it sits. It's got kind of a cup shape on the one end. The cup shape should be pointing towards this shaft and if you put a little dab of grease on it before you put it back in because if it falls off it falls down inside the pump you'll have a bad day okay the parts i'm changing today is going to be this o-ring on top so you'll remove the old o-ring on the top of the pump and then there's also one on the bottom this stops it from dropping diesel fuel down into the pump if you're checking your dipstick every once in a while and you keep getting oil it climbs on your dipstick it's referred to as oiling, and basically you've got a leak here with these O-rings. It could be either one of these two big ones or the little one that fits into this groove for that cam. And you can buy a kit online. They sell all the parts for it. You usually get all three O-rings, and that's what we're going to replace here and put back together. While I've got this off, this quill shaft is inside of here that moves. There's a cam that basically pushes that. This thing rotates and moves up and down. That's what's pumping the fuel, and it also turns and lines up with some ports up here. This shaft will get sticky sometimes and that'll stop these pumps from working. You can take these apart. They claim it's not serviceable. I have done it. If you decide to do it and take this apart, when you do it, you take and uh, Mother's sells some polish for aluminum. Put some on a cotton rag and you polish that quill shaft if you can get it out. So you can usually polish those back up and get them to work. It's usually just got a little corrosion or a little bit of burr on it and you'll get them working again and it's a kind of a cheap fix not something I really recommend but it's a lot cheaper than the 400 bucks and if you do that this shaft's ported it's got ports and holes up inside of here where it lines up you need to make sure that's really clean or you'll ruin your injectors okay there's that little port I was talking about let's see if I can hear a screwdriver you can see this move your fuel shut off actually slides up and down in here you can see it covers that little pinhole that's what you're looking for So, there's a picture of it. Okay, I replaced the O-rings inside that you seen me take out. Got the hydraulic head back on the pump. And back in here, I've got the timing mark. Line back up. I have to get some light from my phone here. Let's see if we can see it down in there. Still got your little arrow and your pointer. Let's see, maybe I can see it, maybe I can't. Yeah, it's just a titch off right now, because I moved the pump. Okay, still so see the, the mark in the arrow, maybe. Right there, see that little arrow on the mark? So that's back together. Okay, so there's a little teeny O-ring that seals this fuel shut off. And right now you can move it. See how it's kind of sticky? Okay, what you want to do is you can put your new O-ring underneath. When you put this back together, you want to tighten this down and then back it off just a titch. Both screws. It's kind of hard to do and hold the camera. You want to get it, though, where this thing free freely moves. You want to tighten it up just to where it barely starts to hang up because that's what's going to seal that shaft. Yeah, it's going pretty good so far. Yeah, that was almost too much right there, I could tell. Right there. It's probably about right, but just a titch more on each screw. You want it as tight as you can get it without it hanging up. Because what it's doing is smashing that O-ring to be your seal. That's well, probably just a titch too tight. Back. Right there. Okay, see how that still free wheels? Still moving around freely. It wants to spring loaded return. Yep, if I really want to stop with it. Right there. Okay, so after you get to that point, there's some safety tie wire. You want to re-safety tie wire these two screws. If you don't, it'll back out and it'll start leaking diesel fuel into the bottom of the pump, which will leak down in the crankcase of the truck. So basically, that's it in the reverse order of operation of how we took it apart. You just reassemble it and should be done with it. Okay, here's a view with the tie wire back on it. It moves freely, but it's tight. I like to put just a thin film of RTV on the old gasket surfaces. And by thin, I mean put it on their really thin to where when you clamp it down you don't see it. If you do see it, clean it up. Don't be a sloppy mechanic. 
I get a lot of people that'll ask me, can you turn a deuce and a half up? Yes, you can. I don't really recommend doing it, but that screw right there on that fuel density compensator, this one right here, if you cut the tie wire on that, you got the set screw on the outside, I'd mark the nut, and then I'd count how many turns I do it. And usually I only turn them up one or two turns if I do them. You'll want to add a pyrometer. A lot of people won't add a pyrometer, and then they can't figure out why they burn their engine up. So if you want to roll coals and be a jerk, that's the little button right there that does it. Um, I'd actually put a pyrometer on it before I did it, run it for a while, see what kind of temperatures you're getting, and then slowly turn that screw up. And that way, if you mark it with paint, at least on one side, you know how many turns you put on it. So if you want to back it off, you can take it back to stock. So just kind of a thought there. Okay, there's that timing mark I was talking about. That's by the hydraulic head, and you can see the notch down in there. Maybe I get it to focus. There's a pointer and a notch. When you set the timing on the truck, that's important.